I am Rex Shumway. The date is April 3rd, 2020. My reason for making videos about ancestors of Grant Lee Shumway and Mabel Carroll who joined the church is to honor them and hope that descendants of Lee and Mabel will be willing to sacrifice to build the kingdom of God on earth like their ancestors did. The idea for this effort came from a family search campaign which sent us all a link to a one-page ordinance summary of our ancestors. The summaries had a photo of the ancestor, if available, a birth and death date, and their age when they personally received temple ordinances and a photo of the temple. However, I am including a few people that were missed and discussing some additional information about them. Naturally, this excludes ancestors who died before 1830 and those who did not choose to be baptized. The first structures built for temple ordinances were built in days of poverty, but the saints did their best. This colorized photo of the Nauvoo Temple is humbling to me as I visualize my life of ease compared to that of my ancestors. In Nauvoo, there were no lovely chapels to meet in. Those saints focused on temple and missionary work. In the early days of Salt Lake City, temple ordinances were performed in Brigham Young's office, which was in a building called the Council House. Use of the Council House began in 1850. Knowing that completion of the Salt Lake Temple was many years away, Brigham Young directed Truman O. Angel, architect of the Salt Lake Temple, to design a temporary temple. In 1855, an adobe building called the Endowment House was dedicated on the northwest corner of Temple Square. The Endowment House was used until 1889. Ceiling ordinances performed in Mexico around the year 1900 show the place name as other. Video part one looks at least half of my pedigree chart. Part two will be Mabel's half. I show a numbered chart for two reasons. It is easy to see which ancestors I am discussing and not discussing. Numbering the people gives me a number to apply to the video input files in an organized way. I have numbered the fan chart ancestors going clockwise out each male line, then the female line. The 15 persons on Lee's line are 1. Peter Minerly Shumway 2. Charles Shumway 3. Louisa Minerly 4. Catherine Taylor 5. Thomas Taylor 6. Charity Sharpnet 7. Mary Elizabeth Johnson 8. Sixtus Ellis Johnson, 9. Joe Hills Johnson, 10. Julia Hills, 11. Anna Pixley Johnson, 12. Elizabeth Melissa Merrill, 13. Justin Jared Merrill, 14. Samuel Merrill, and 15. Phoebe Odell. Peter Shumway was 18 years old in 1871 when he received his initiatory and endowment in the endowment house. Eight years later he married Mary Elizabeth Johnson in the St. George Temple. Peter's father, Charles Shumway, lived in northern Illinois when a great missionary named Elisha Hurd Grobe taught his family about the restored gospel. The Shumways read the Book of Mormon, believed it, and were baptized. They were baptized the 3rd of June, 1839, according to the early Mormon Missionary Record Service. I will tell a little known side story here about another connection we have to Elder Groves. Elder Groves' wife, Lucy Simmons, is a half-sister of our ancestor, Samuel Thompson. When the saints left Nauvoo for the West, Grandpa Samuel took his two older children, Almond and Sarah Miranda, and left his two younger children, Lydia and Belle, 
with Grandma Mary Anderson because she wanted to stay behind with her parents. Later, Brigham Young asked for Mormon battalion soldiers, and Samuel Thompson felt a desire to serve. The Groves family brought Samuel's two children across the plains. Charles went to Nauvoo to meet the Prophet Joseph before moving there in 1841. While in Nauvoo, Charles worked on the temple, served on the Council of Fifty, and went on two short missions. He probably didn't know that the Prophet Joseph was a distant cousin. Charles' great-great-grandmother, Araya Shamoy, is a sister to Joseph Smith's great-great-grandfather, Samuel Smith. Charles was endowed still to both Julia and Hooker and Louisa Minerly in the Nauvoo Temple just before fleeing from Nauvoo on February 4, 1846. Louisa Minerly was 22 years old on January 10, 1846, when she received her endowment and was sealed to Charles in the Nauvoo Temple. Louisa's father, John Minerly, died in 1837 in New York. The family joined the church on January 1, 1840 and went to Nauvoo. Louisa's mother, Catherine Taylor, aged 47, was able to be with Louisa in the Nauvoo Temple the day she received her endowment the 10th of January, 1846. Harm Smith gave Catherine a patriarchal blessing on the 2nd of February, 1842. Also in 1842, Catherine witnessed the proxy baptism for her husband John performed in the basement of the Nauvoo Temple. Lucetta Butters, a great-granddaughter of the Wiza, wrote a book called The Stories of Three great-grandmothers. She tells about the friendships and hardships of her grandmothers, Eliza Minerly, Catherine Taylor, and Charity Sharpnett. All three were born in Terrytown, Westchester County, New York. My son, Andrew, and I once were able to sit down and talk with Lucetta about her research and witness her admiration for her ancestors. Catherine's father, Thomas Taylor, at age 74, received his endowment in the Nauvoo Temple 11 days after Catherine did. Charity Sharpnet, number 6, and Anna Pixley Johnson, number 11, were both missed by the campaign software, so I built a page for both of them and will say a bit more about them. Catherine Taylor's mother, Charity Sharpnet, was baptized in New York on January 1, 1840. Information provided by the Nauvoo Land and Records Office shows Charity as a member of the Nauvoo Relief Society and involved in performing 11 proxy baptisms for her ancestors in the baptismal font in the basement of the Nauvoo Temple in 1843. Unfortunately, Charity Sharpnet died in 1845, so she did not get to participate with her daughter Catherine and her granddaughter Louisa in the 1846 endowment. Charity Sharpnet's name is on the plaque at the Old Nauvoo Cemetery, now called the Pioneer Saints Cemetery. Catherine Taylor's husband, John Minerly, had died in New York in 1837, and she was left to take care of her father, Thomas Taylor, age 74. Louisa Minerly left her mom and grandfather in Nauvoo when Charles Shumway led the first group of saints across the Mississippi River headed for the Rocky Mountains on February 4, 1846. Catherine Taylor and her father soon left Nauvoo, but we find that Thomas Taylor died in Montrose, Iowa, across the river from Nauvoo in 1847. Two years later, Catherine died in St. Louis, Missouri. Mary Elizabeth Johnson was 
endowed in the St. George Temple when she was only age 14. And before she was age 15, she married Peter Minnelli Shumway in the same temple. When you marry young, you can raise 12 children. Mary's father was Sixtus Ellis Johnson, who at age 33 was endowed in the endowment house in 1862. However, we, he was sealed to marry Editha Merrill in 1852 in other, other would likely mean in President Young's office or the council house. After two children were born, Sixtus went on a mission to the Sandwich Islands and was gone for several years. Sixtus' father, Joe Hills Johnson, is the most famous ancestor we have that was a member of the church. He joined the church in June 1831 and went to Kirtland on Zion's Camp March and suffered getting tossed out of Missouri and Illinois. He was endowed in the Nauvoo Temple at age 43. Joel's mother, Julia Hills, age 62, was endowed a week before Joel and died in Council Bluffs, Iowa in 1853. Joel's wife, Anna Pixley Johnson, was born in New Hampshire in 1800 and died near Nauvoo in 1840. Joel and her joined the church on May 20th 1831 in Amherst, Ohio. So I show a photo of the nearby Vermilion River, but I do not know where they were baptized. A story about her mentions that she was endowed in the Curlin Temple, but after doing some research, I found that in 1836 she received her washings and anointings in the Curlin Temple. Sixtus's wife, Editha Melissa Merrill, was age 29 when she was endowed in the, in the endowment house. Edith's father, Justin Jared Merrill, was endowed in Nauvoo at age 41 and sealed to his wife, Lavinia Manchester, in the Logan Temple in 1885, which was 46 years after Lavinia died. Justin Jared's father, Samuel Merrill, and mother, Phoebe O'Dell, were endowed in the Nauvoo Temple at age 65 and 57, respectively, on February 3, 1846, the same date as their son. Both parents are buried in the Salt Lake Cemetery. Justin is buried in the Smithfield Cemetery. We should all be nudged when we see what our ancestors did with what they had.